God is raising up a very special breed of end time people. God is going to take you into dimensions, heights, manifestations that some of you will be utterly amazed of how God will use you. I have a very strong prayer for you this morning. In the Gospel of St. Luke, Jesus is speaking to a small group of religious leaders and he is disciplining them. He said to them, you can discern the sky, you can discern the weather, but how is it that you cannot discern the seasons? Journey here. I have to confess to you this morning, I'd like to keep you for three more days. <laughs> I'm asking the Holy Spirit to unveil to us. What was that incredible secret that an early church had. What was that incredible capability? Say capability. capability. It wasn't natural. I want you to really probe the spirit world with me this morning very deep. We have God sending his son into this world. And I trust that you will not get upset with Morris this morning. I love you so much. How incredible the cross is. And the fact that Jesus gave his life and shed his blood. We take nothing away from that. The cross was only a piece of wood. The man on the cross was what we focus our attention upon. That's why you can wear all the crosses you want to. I don't care. <laughs> but they don't mean anything. A lot of people died on crosses. Jesus was not the only one. But there was a big difference between Christ on the cross and the thieves on the right and left side. Why did God send his son? You have to understand that we're in a master plan. The God that you and I serve is an incredible God of purpose. He's a God of 
plan. Something happened way back in the eons of time that we cannot determine. But a force, an angelic being called Lucifer rose up against God in those heavens. This Lucifer was God's right hand master angel. Beautiful, magnificent. I cannot tell you. That's why when we get to heaven, we're going to have the greatest opportunity in the eon of ages to talk and discuss about all the things that we don't understand. <laughs> How can angels have the ability to disobey God? We don't understand it, but they do. And Lucifer did. And he rose up against God. He said, I'll be greater than God. I'll dethrone him. And he took one third of all the angels in heaven, followed him in this incredible rebellion. God cast them out of the heavens. Then when God created the earth, and when God breathed the life of breath into man, Satan was so angry. He couldn't defeat God in the heavens, so now he come, comes against his creatures and he gets them to do what he did, disobey God. God's master plan was always this. I will destroy you. You will not have power over what I have created. So somebody here this morning say to me purpose. So God sends his son to die on the cross? Not really. To shed his blood? Not really. He sent him here to defeat and to destroy the power of the devil. Thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus, but it wasn't the sacrifice of Jesus that defeated Satan. It wasn't the blood that he shed that defeated him either. It was when he paid this price that there was a link between him and his heavenly father and his father when he saw him in the bowels of the earth would not allow him to suffer the humiliation of that death and that price that he paid. So God opened the heavens and God broke the prison doors and God broke the chains of hell and death over his son and raised him from the dead. Oh my God. Now can you imagine 
this incredible praise that the Son of God paid in the master plan of God. 1 John 3, 8, so you'll understand that what Morris is saying to you has scriptural foundation. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy. This devil is not wounded. He is not crippled. He is destroyed. Now, can you imagine with me I told you this is going to be the greatest morning of your life. Oh, you didn't hear me. Can you imagine with me for a moment this master plan of God, him sending his son, the purpose, and then God giving birth to the greatest miracle in the world. It wasn't when he spoke the worlds into existence. It wasn't when he put the sun and the moon and the stars in their orbits. It wasn't when he put a little dust together and breathed into that dust the breath of life and made man in his own image. It wasn't when he anointed Moses and used him to lead the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It wasn't the pillar of cloud by day, the fire by night. It wasn't when he opened the Red Sea. It wasn't when he fed them in the wilderness for 40 years. It wasn't when he rolled back the River Jordan. It wasn't when he opened the earth and swallowed the walls of Jericho. It wasn't when he closed the mouths of lions. It wasn't when he quenched the violence of fire. It was when he sent an angel. Speak to a young girl. That angel calling her by name, Mary. And she with bewilderment and wonder turning and looking and seeing an angelic being became fearful. What do you want of me? I've come to tell you, Mary, you're highly chosen. Something is going to happen to you, Mary, that has never, ever happened before. Will you believe the prophet this morning? Yes. Something is going to happen to you today. Yes. Has never happened to you before. You're going to bear a child, Mary. I've come to bring you these tidings. Me? I've never known a man. I have never committed adultery. I'm not even married. How dare you come and tell me I'm going to bear a child? Anybody want God to use your life? You remember my first message to you in this school of ministry? Fear. When you walk out of this building today, you will be anointed so strongly, not by the oil 
that you're going to have placed on you or the hand you're going to have placed on you, but you will be anointed so strong because of the Spirit of God that's in this building this morning. And all fear will be broken off of your life. Mary became afraid. And when you look at the task, please, my heart breaks. You are in the greatest moment of destiny. I cannot let you walk out these doors this morning just having been blessed. I cannot. Do you know how the angel diffused the spirit of fear in this young girl's heart? He told her, Mary, don't be afraid. And I need to spend a whole morning with you just on this one valuable truth. The ways that God will use you, please. When your life is so open and you are so tender here, you are so vulnerable here, for this or that or the other thing. And that's why I pray today, God give you the gift of discernment. <laughs> what was released into Mary from the angel that broke the back of fear was the word of God. Now listen. The angel said to her, Mary, don't be afraid. And I'm just going to tell you, God is going to ask you to do things, go places. He's going to ask you to sometimes do the most silly things but you will do them because this is not the work of a man. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. If he could make an ax head to swim and a donkey to talk. How many of you know there's no limit as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than man's. Let's break the mold of denominationalism and let's break the mold.